Hi everyone, welcome to Java Techie. So Spring Boot 4 is finally released and it's packed with some really cool new features like modularized, API versioning, HTTP interface client, null safety, improved native and AOT supports, new JMS client for messaging APIs. All these features are truly game changers and we'll dive into each of them in our upcoming videos. But in today's video, will focus on one of the most exciting updates that is declarative rest client. So if you have ever used pain client before, this is going to look very familiar, but trust me, it's faster, lighter and 100% spring native. Okay. So we'll, we'll see how you can call rest APIs without writing boilerplate code and how this new feature fits perfectly with the latest spring ecosystem. Okay, all right. So without any further delay, let's get started. So to save our time, already I created one product service where we are exposing couple of REST endpoint and same REST endpoint we are going to consume using the latest REST client offered by the Spring Boot 4. Okay, that is what something we want to demonstrate. Now, if you'll open the product controller, I have defined three REST endpoint add product, which will add product to the DB, then fetch all the products and get product by category. Now, if you'll check the service class, the logic is very straightforward. We do direct database call using this repo. Okay, and this is what something called JPA repository that is a simple and straightforward implementation of product service. So first let's validate all the endpoint of this product controller is working as expected. Now let me start the application. So it started on port 9191. Now let's go to the browser, open the swagger. Now you can see all the three rest endpoint we have defined in our service. Okay. Now let's try the first one which will give you list of product object. Just click on execute. You will see list of product object here. We have around 1000 plus product object in my DV and all the product object I am able to retrieve. Now let's try the next endpoint where we are fetching the list of product by category. So what I will do, I will just use this particular category, copy this, go to the next endpoint product slash category. Now try it out. Provide your input as a request param. Click on execute. You will find couple of product who belongs to this food snacks category. Okay. And we have couple of result here. Now let's try the post endpoint where we are going to add the product to the database. So click on post. Try it out. I will give some random value. I will give 1002. food snacks. Let it be. Execute the request. The record is added. So all the three rest endpoint working as expected in our product service. Now let's consume these three rest endpoint using our Spring Boot 4 rest client. So for that I'll create a new Spring project. Make sure to define the Spring Boot version 4.0 because that is what we are going to explore. Now, let me fill all the required information. Next, let me add the required dependency. We will add web dependency. Then, I will add, if you will type REST client, you will find something HTTP client. Okay, we are not using OpenFain. HTTP client in Spring Boot 4 is similar as open vein. You will you'll understand once we start developing the code. So just add it, generate the project. Let me import this same project to our IntelliJ idea. So this is our new REST client project. Now if you will go and check the pom.xml, we are using latest version 4.0 and we are using JDK 21. You can use JDK 25 as well. 
Spring Boot 4 has that support. And then if you observe, we have added REST client dependency and web dependency. Now let me add one more dependency that is Stutter WebMBC UI, which is nothing our Swagger dependency. Okay, all good. Now let me update the project. All good. Now what we can do? First, let me create the packages. I'll first create a package called DTO where I will keep the product object because that is what only we are consuming, right? If you see the product service, what is the return type of all my REST endpoint product object? So I need this particular object in my client as well. So for that, let me go to the REST client and inside DTO, let me add the product object. ID name, description, price and category. So we no need to duplicate it in real time. You can go with some common jar, create some simple Maven project and keep all the common object or DTO or mapper things. Okay. Since this is just a demo, I hard coded in my client as well. Now remove it. Now let me create couple of another package. Let's say client, then controller class. That's it. Now inside the client, I need to write logic to consume all the endpoint of my product service. Now how I can define my client? That is the simple approach in Spring Boot 4 new REST client. So what you can do? You can simply create one interface. You can define something like product client. Now in this product client, you need to define one annotation called HTTP exchange. And in HTTP exchange, you need to define what URL your upstream is up and running or where is your product service up and running that particular path. Okay. So I'll define localhost 9191 slash products. That is what my base URL. Now all the methods, for example, in product service, all the endpoint, what you have defined are the product, get products, get product by category. Everything you no need to create the REST template object and call them one by one. Rather, you can define the same skeleton as an interface in your new REST client approach. Now, how you can define that? The first method will add the product object to the DB, right? So you can define something public and you can define what is the return type of that list of product, right? Just define the method add new product. What is the input you want to pass? List of product. Now, this is my request body. So, I need to annotate at the right request body. I mean, you just need to define an interface and inside that interface, you, you just need to provide the same skeleton of your upstream endpoint. Same thing we also do using the Fain client, but Fain client is not owned by the Spring framework. That is part of the Spring cloud which is third party dependency, right? So if you want to use the complete spring native approach, you can go for this new REST client. Now which type of endpoint is this get post put delete? This is post. So define post exchange. Now let's define the next one to fetch all the products from the upstream. So for that the return type will be list of product get all products there is no parameter just define this is my get method similarly just define product by category you can define this and you need to pass this variable it is up to you how you want to pass let's define path variable you can go for path variable you can go for request parameter now you have defined your product client now simply you can use this particular interface to call all these upstream methods or to consume all these three upstream methods. Okay. Let's understand how we can do that. But before that, you need to register your client. Okay. Because you can have 10 client, but how your spring know, okay, this is what some client is there and they want to make the connection to the upstream using this particular endpoint. So you need to tell to the Spring framework, okay, I have one product client and who will connect to this 
particular endpoint that is my upstream and these are the endpoint methods so for that you can let's create another package or you can keep here also new java class i'll define http client config annotate at the rate configuration then you need to use another annotation called import http services whatever the http client service you have defined you need to register by this particular annotation and here you can define there are multiple options you can define base package classes or you can define base package name something like that base packages or you can even directly define the class name so better let me define the base packages com.javatiki.client and this is my type of my client now if you have 10 different client object you can define that particular package and this is one array you can define your other classes as well let's say user client dot class or you have something something whatever client you have registered order client dot class like that you can define okay since i don't have many clients i will not use them all good apart from this let me tell you one interesting approach where you can group your clients for example let's say group i'll group this something like product client okay now let's add the product client and you have something called a dot class b dot class you can group them now let's say i have something called inventory client or payment client what i can do i'll copy this define the package where you have defined the other clients and define that particular class just define the group as a payment client like that you can group your list of client in your code okay so this may not give you clarity at this moment but once we'll define a microservices in upcoming videos i can group them in this particular client approach so let's remove this for now all good now what we can do since you already registered your client just define the rest endpoint or just define the client controller methods and call using the http client now let me create a java class i'll name it product client controller then annotate at the rate rest controller define base request mapping base url now let's inject the product client here private now define endpoints to call this product client now once you will call this product client it will directly connect to the upstream and perform all the operation you have defined so let me define three client rest endpoint we will use the product client to get the result okay let's add the input statement all good so i have defined the endpoint from this endpoint i am using the client and this client contains what is the base url to connect to the upstream and which type of methods my upstream contains with the correct input and output this is my parameter this is my expected output if you have different dto and all you can configure them in your client code or just keep it in a shared common jar okay and then reuse it across the project so you can do either or so since this is just a demo i am going with this approach now this is what the simple approach to define rest client in spring boot 4 so if you observe we do the same thing using fain client isn't it but the annotation might be different but we define the similar approach using fain client but in spring boot 4 make it simple and it provide the pure spring native approach defining this particular annotation all good now let's test our client code before that what i'll do i'll just change the server port of my client to 9292 or something else server port i'll define 9292 go to the main class start the application so it started on port 9292 now go to the browser i will open swagger with 9292 which is my 
कंज्यूमर एप्लीकेशन स्वागर एंड पॉइंट सी द एंड पॉइंट यूर एल प्रोडक्ट स्लैश क्लाइंट सो ऑल दिज एंड पॉइंट वी हैव डिफाइन इन आवर क्लाइंट कोड नाउ लेट्स टेस्ट देम आउट लेट्स ए प्रोडक्ट क्लाइंट वॉट इट डज इट विल फेच ऑल द प्रोडक्ट राइट एग्जीक्यूटिव You will find all the products, all the how many records you have? Let's see, thousand two. Okay, now let's say I want to search by category. Just choose one category. Go to the category endpoint, try it out, execute it. We got couple of records for that particular category. okay now let's try the next endpoint that is add product to the database or just add a new product now what i'll do i'll just copy something i will give the 1003 that is what the latest id 1003 i'll add some random value execute the new record is added now if you want to validate whether really this is added or not you can again do the get call where it will return all the object and you will see the count see the new record is added here now how simple is this guys we just define one client by defining couple of annotation saying that okay this is my base url and these are my skeleton of upstream endpoint with the input parameter output parameter and just by defining the type of http endpoints out of the box isn't it spring boot 4 is really leveling up and we are just getting started so smash that like button drop your thoughts in the comments and of course subscribe if you have not already see you in the next video where we will cover more of these awesome features so till then keep coding keep learning i will see you in my next video